Hello, this is Dave Manell, and I'm Director of Product Development here at Accountants World. Today's webinar is going to be on accounting power features, especially as they relate to um, CAS, Client Accounting Services. So the first thing is, briefly and quickly, what is CAS? Well, the traditional view is CAS is a few different things. It could be after the fact financial statement preparation, such as write-up work. It can be transaction processing, such as uh, accounts payable, receivables, doing payroll taxes, payrolls for clients. Uh, in this webinar, I'm going to give an example of how to offer uh, bill payment services for your clients. And it can also be outsourced CFO and controller services. These are higher level services that you want to give to your client. Uh, you can bill more for them, plus you can provide better service for your clients with them. So why CAS, why now? I think we all know, those of us that are accountants, that for some reason, we like doing accounting, but our clients don't. If you had all your clients together and you asked them, do you love doing accounting? Raise your hands. Very few hands would go up. There are three compelling reasons why you should offer CAS. First, as I pointed out in the fact that clients don't like to do accounting, clients want you to do it for them and they need it. Secondly, if you use the right solutions, you can offer CAS using just about the same resources your firm is currently using for client accounting work. And you can grow your profits greatly without adding clients or staff. So the bottom line is, this is a win-win for both you. You make more money, offer better services for your clients and your clients. They get better service from you and they don't have to do accounting work anymore. So anyway, let's get into uh, what accounting power has to offer. First, first, briefly, I just wanna touch on the comprehensive suite of products that we offer here at Accountants World. We have accounting power, we have after the fact payroll, we have the cloud cabinet, which is a document uh, storage portal, payroll relief, which is for offering live payroll, and we have uh, practice relief, which is for time and billing, keeping track of time spent on a practice and billing your customers. And we also have website relief, and this website right here is an example of it. The product is always branded to you. So this mutual growth, that's the um, the logo of a fictitious firm we have here set up at Accountants World. So that would be your logo that would be up there. <clears throat> it's a comprehensive accounting program. It has everything that's needed to do write-up work, everything that's needed to do trial balance work, everything that's needed to do uh, bookkeeping work, such as billing invoices and things of that nature. It's comprehensive in that it offers um, job costing. It has inventory tracking. You can do uh, consolidated returns using the program. So anyway, let's move ahead. First, I want to show the accountant management CFO tools. I'm going to show the snapshot, alerts, ratio, dashboard, and client notifications. And I'm going to go into a little detail on how to use the different screens. This is the client snapshot, and I'm gonna come back to a screen like this several times during this uh, webinar. The first thing to notice about this is you can see all of your clients in one location. So instead of like just seeing one client at a time, seeing what's going on with them, this is a place you come in, you start the day or during the day you check in and you see what is the financial situation of my various clients. And what is the situation as far as how my staff is working on them or how the clients are doing their accounting? So I'm gonna go into a few of the things here. You'll notice accounts receivable is in red. That's because you have the ability to set up alerts when amounts fall outside of certain predetermined ranges that you set up for the clients. So in this case, 3J software, their accounts receivable got too high. Um, these are client specific. 291,000 may be high for one client, whereas another client maybe commonly would have uh, several hundred thousand dollars in accounts receivable, or maybe another client, if it's above 10,000, you wanna be notified. 
there's also you can check to see the cash balance this is also the same idea what might be low for one client 5000 might be low for this client whereas uh, 1430 might not be low for this client so it's client specific based upon whatever you feel is important for your clients this one is the suspense category. Briefly, I'm going to tell you what the suspense is. Suspense is when uh, your staff or you or your clients are entering transactions. They're not quite sure how they should be coded. And so this means that, uh, yeah, I know that I got to find out from El Hardin Zolohiko what those $380 were, what accounts they should be um, coded to. So you set them up as suspense. Later on, we have an easy screen for converting un, uh, unassigned transactions to various expense categories, although I'm not going into that detail here. Also, when you're on a screen like this, you can sort by the, any of the headings. So if you want to see, well, what's the cur current status as far as how my staff is working on the various clients? You can sort on current period. And you can see which ones are up to date, which ones are further behind. So you know where they are in reference to how close to being kept up to date they are at this point. You can also see uh, if the client has login rights, when's the last time the client logged in. You could click on cash balance. You could see, even if you hadn't set up alerts, you could see which clients uh, have negative or low balances. So it's a very powerful screen. That's really what I'm trying to say here. So how do you set up the alerts? The, what you do is you go to the alerts, which is up here. And from there, you would click on preferences. And here you set up on a client by client basis exactly what you want to be the thresholds for the various alerts. And you choose which ones you want to know about which ones are important to you for this particular client as you can see for 3j software i have it set up when accounts receivable are above 250,000 that the alert should be triggered you could also set it up that when a check is written above a certain amount an alert is triggered and these four you can also set up so that an email will go out. So if a check goes out to uh, above 25,000 for this client, they'll get an email. And this really makes that client feel that you're right on top of their situation, these, these various alerts. And yet there's very little work involved for you to be notified of these things. So you can be on top of your client's financial situation with very little work, and then you can go ahead and if steps are needed to uh, contact them about it. <clears throat> you also have the ability to set it up that if ratios are outside of a certain range to be notified. And coming soon, no, this is an example of the, the alert, the email that would go out to a client. So in this case, an email went out letting them know what the amount of the receivables were. And coming soon, instead of just uh, an email, there's also going to be the ability to send a text message and also a push notification from within uh, an app that we're working on. So the next thing is the ratios. And the ratios also, you can customize what you want to be shown up for the ratios. You go to trial balance, financial ratios. From within that screen, you would select which ones you want to be displayed. Now you should see here, I have six ratios displayed here. And that's because I'd gone to setup and I'd chosen which ones I wanted to display. Uh, we have a little quick thing here showing uh, how they're calculated. Uh, for certain ratios like current ratio, I think uh, most accountants do know what the formulas are for that. But there are some others that um, aren't so obvious. So we have the exactly how we calculate it here for you to see. And you can also enter the industry standard amount so you can set it compared to what it should be for that particular industry. And as I said, you can choose which ones you want to display. Uh, 
Okay, the dashboard. The dashboard is kind of like the complement to the snapshot. Snapshot shows all of the clients in one spot. The dashboard shows more information about a particular client. So as you can see, I come in here, I can see a, a nice graph showing profit or loss, good graph showing revenue and expense from one year to the previous year. You have the ability to customize this. So you can come in and say, these are the things I want to see. These are the things I want my client to see if I want my client to be able to see the dashboard at all. And you can set it up so that uh, the client has permissions to see the dashboard. And if you have accounting power, CAS, even if you don't give the client rights to um, do work in the program, you can give them the right to just view the, the dashboard. So here's one of the features, the projected cash balance. It'll show the the current balance as of this period and based upon upcoming receivables and payables, you can see how you expect the cash to change in the future. Another good thing about these screens is you have the ability, as I mentioned on the, um, on the uh, snapshot, you have the ability to click on a heading. So let's say I'm coming in trying to figure out for this particular client, why are their receivables so high? I can click on due date and I would be able to sort and see which are the oldest receivables. So maybe I could say, well, there's something to call my client. Well, what is it with Dewarty Hills excavating? Why is that in, uh, receivable two years old? Although in the general scheme of things for this client, it's kind of a small amount. You could also sort by the amount column and see which ones are the largest. And so you could call your client, well, why is Big Dan's machinery? Why do they have a $104,000 uh, receivable? That might be normal. Your client will say, well, that's just the way we've been doing business with them for 10 years. That's just the way we operate. You could maybe try to convince your client that uh, good, quick, receivable policies are better for a company in general. But anyway, the, the real point is here, it's very easy to come in and figure out what's going on with a particular client. And you could drill down to, uh, to see more information. Okay, client notification screen. Very similar to the snapshot. You can see all of your clients in one spot. The difference is here, instead of giving so much uh, financial information, this is more broader background information for the client. You can see, well, this client has nine checks to be printed. You can see which clients are registered to be using bank feeds. You can see if they're set up to uh, use a digital account in order to pay bills digitally. And you can also see if their merchant account is set up to see if they can receive payments by credit card within the when they send out invoices. A very powerful feature in this screen is the emailing capabilities. So let's say if I wanted to set up all my clients to be registered for bank feeds, I see a couple of them aren't right here. So what I would do, I would come to the ones that aren't, I would mark them, Then I would click on email. There's several different emails, canned emails we have set up. You can also set up uh, custom emails. And I would choose the one for sign up for bank feeds. And what would then happen is an email would go out to those clients that you, that you selected. And when the client gets the email, it's very easy for them. They simply click on the link. We do the same thing with bill payment as I'll show you for approvals. All they do is click on a link. They can be on their smartphone, they can be uh, on their computer. They just get the email, click the link, it takes them to the screen to do it. The real powerful point about this, in this case, it was just two companies because this is a pretend situation. But if you wanted to send out an email to uh, 30 of your clients, or maybe you wanted to send out a month in performance analysis report to 30 of the clients, you can do it with just a few clicks.
Okay, permissions. Permissions are a very powerful way of allowing your clients to do some things that they have to do in the system if they want to and if you want them to. But yet it also can keep them from making errors by going where they shouldn't be going. So you choose exactly what permissions and what screens you want them to have access to. So maybe you have a client and the only thing is they want to be able to write up checks in the system, send them out. So you could give them just the permission to write checks and nothing else if you want it. Maybe you have a client who wants to create invoices, you can give them that permission. Uh, just as a quick thing, the invoicing, we have uh, customized invoices. We have several different templates that can be used and you can set up uh, preferences on how you want them to look. So the main point of this screen is you determine based upon your client's needs and desires exactly what you want them to be able to do and you keep them from making a lot of mistakes. They don't set up a, a new account that is not set up in the proper way or maybe when not even a new account was needed. They don't um, pay bills, go into closed periods, so a lot of different things you can keep them from doing. And these permissions can be from very little to giving them permissions for everything or almost everything. There are a few things that we reserve for the accountant to have, such as uh, a client can never send out uh, financial statements with your letters on it. And they also don't do adjustments. They can be given the right to do journal entries, but not the adjustments. When you do set up a client for permissions, you have the ability by clicking on uh, client view to see exactly what the client is going to see once you set it up. So in this client you see there's just a few screens that they have access to. <clears throat> Another point about the permissions is you can give the ability to your clients to assign permissions to their staff. So in this particular case, here's a client, Whitehorse Sales, and they were given almost all the permissions. But then the company, Whitehorse Sales, can determine from its employees which permissions do they want various staff members to have. So they want Dr. Pepper to only be able to write checks and create invoices. This is also very helpful when it's for doing your own accounting work. So you could set it up for your own accounting that somebody in your business could uh, maybe write checks or pay bills, but yet they don't have the ability to go in and view everything about your practice. And one final point about when you're doing it for your own accounting work, there is a $20 per month fee for bookkeeping after the first year for bookkeeping clients, but for your own accounting work, that's always included free with the program. And finally, when you have accounting power CAS, you have the ability, even if you're not assigning the bookkeeping and paying the $20 fee for a client, you have the ability to give a few select rights to the clients to log in and do. So a client could come in and write checks, report uh, cash receipts, and as I mentioned before, they could view the dashboard. So next I wanna go into some of the client accounting services such as uh, bill payment. I want to go through and exactly show how you could offer a bill payment service for your client. This can be a very profitable um, adventure for you. So how does this work? Well first a client can take a snapshot of an invoice to be paid from any smartphone. The invoice is then saved in accounting power When your staff logs in, all the uploaded invoices are displayed. The staff enters the invoices, and then with just a mouse click, they can send the entered invoices to the client for approval. The client can approve the invoices to be paid. 
the approved invoices are then paid by your staff and especially when they're paid with digital checks it becomes very very easy for you you don't have there's no writing out checks stuffing envelopes putting stamps on it uh, people don't really go down to the post office anymore that often but not nobody has to go down to the post office or anything like that to uh, to mail the payments out with digital checks they are automatically sent out to the clients to the clients vendors and then it's very easy for the client vendor to accept the payment this can be highly profitable our research shows that it's a five dollar per bill is a typical fee that can be charged so the first thing is i want to show the bill payment uh, screen this screen is very similar to the snapshot and the notification you see all your clients in one location and you can see certain information about the various clients so if i'm wondering in white horse sales what bills are unprocessed for them if i simply click on the the letter there the three it'll bring up and show me exactly which three bills are unprocessed for that client i don't have to be in that client so you see right now i'm in a different client i can see this for any of the clients without going into them the same is true for what bills need to be approved and what bills need to be paid. So I can see a list of bills that uh, are waiting to be approved and also which bills are waiting to be paid. So now let's say that for white horse sales, I say, okay, I see there's three here. I wanna go and do the work. All I do is click on white horse sales right here. It'll take me directly to that client, to white horse sales, to the bill uh, entry screen. I would click where it says unprocessed bills. It would show me the ones that are unprocessed. I would select one. In this case, I selected the one for 3J software. I can then see the amount that's here and then enter the information directly for that client. Uh, another very important point about attaching, um, attaching invoices to bills, you always know where that invoice is. Uh, anyone who's been in the business for a while knows that uh, occasionally invoices get lost. They get misfiled, they get uh, misplaced. And uh, I've seen one time in a firm where the partner was going crazy trying to find a particular invoice. And in the end, actually, it turned out to be on his desk underneath a pile of papers, something that I maybe would also do. So, I mean, the point is, very easy at any time later when you need to find out the details for this particular expense, you can go right there, see the source document. So anyway, moving ahead with the bill payment services. So in this case, I entered two of the bills. So now instead of there being uh, three here on process, there's just one. And instead of being two that need to be approved, now there's four. What this kind of does is it it kind of helps you move right through the process of doing the bill payment service. From left to right, you can see how you're progressing. So there's four bills to be approved. Very easy for me to send out an email to my clients asking them to approve them. I would can simply come over here. I select which ones I want to send an email to. I say I want the one to approve pending bills and just like I'd mentioned before, this is another one of those screens where I could have sorted on the top and sorted by the ones that have uh, bills needing to be approved. Maybe there are 10 clients I want to send it out to. Boom, boom, boom. I click those boxes, send out the invoices to all 10 clients almost immediately. The client gets an in, gets an email. Like I said before, very easy for the client to uh, respond to this. All they do is they click on the link. Doesn't matter if they're on their smartphone or on their computer. They just click on the link, a little screen pops up. They enter the information. They select which ones they wanna pay, how much they wanna pay, and what date they want it to be paid on. So now as we see, it's moved on down to bills to be paid. 
So there six, would be six bills to be paid for this client. So the next step would be to use the digital checks to pay. Uh, it's very easy to pay bills with digital checks. Vendor receives the email, they enter their information, and funds are sent directly to their account. Going forward, after the first time they do it, they don't even have to enter the information. The information is securely stored for them, and the bill will be paid with um, without them having to do that extra work. And another thing to remember is this is for both receiving and making payments, and plus the fee is much lower than credit card fees. So like if somebody's paying a credit card, uh, a $5,000 bill at two, two, three percent, the, the fee can be quite high. Digital checks, the fee is a dollar or a dollar fifty if it has to be mailed out. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do you pay with the digital checks? You simply come to the check printing screen, you select which clients you want to do, and then you click on digital checks. One thing which is a new feature, in fact, it wasn't here when I did this print screen, which is why I didn't select the one without the email. It used to be if there wasn't an email, the payment could not be made. It would have to be uh, mailed out to that client or paid that way. But now, as long as the client has an address entered, I mean, as long as the client's vendor has an address entered, um, Checkbook IO will pay that digital check, will send out a, an actual check to that client or to that vendor. And this is a, a very important thing because um, there's a couple of reasons why people don't have, uh, have the email address. I mean, sometimes it could just be a company doesn't have it, but a lot of places like a, like a, a utility company or something like that, they don't have the, the setup in order to receive, to have somebody open an invoice and then click on uh, click on the link in order to uh, accept payment. So for those type of circumstances, this takes care of that. So this is an example. Check went out. Dave Manella sent a digital check. The vendor receives the email. They open it up. They enter the information and the payment goes directly into their account. Another added advantage of uh, being paid this way is you don't have to record any payments being done. All the transactions are automatically recorded here. A quick aside to, that I wanna mention, is you see these with a little uh, paper clip, as I mentioned before about uh, the documents always attached. This is another place where you could drill down to see the uh, actual document. So it makes it very easy to retrieve information about, uh, about a particular bill. And um, this is an example of how you can come here. You'll see the, the complete transaction. In my case, it was, since it was actually a real check made to me, it was just a $4 check. But you come here, you see the debit, you see where, where the credit, which expense account it went to. All of that's done automatically for you. So there's no work involved. So now invoicing. Um, it's powerful invoicing screen. If you're familiar with other software, it looks very similar. It's not uh, no great learning curve in order to figure out how to use it. A few features is uh, it's very easy to send it out. You can send send out an invoice with the uh, with an email directly to the client. Other features that that are involved there is number one, we have the ability to create templates. So if you have a client who's always setting out a, a certain batch of products, you can set up the whole batch of products here, save it as a template, then the next time when you're selecting it for a different uh, customer for that client, instead of filling in all the information, you can just click on the template and it fills the screen for you. Kind of the same idea also, you can set up estimates or your clients can set up estimates and they can just then 
automatically fill in the um, the invoice. You can set it up so that uh, based upon the product name, you know that typically when a gizmo is being sold, there's going to be five of them for $1,000 each. So that way it'll automatically do that for you. You can, of course, change the amounts. You can set up if there was a deposit on account. So that we'll handle that as the payment. You can track uh, who the sales representative is, and you can set up recurring invoices. And here's a nice screen where you can view all the information about the recurring uh, invoices. You can see when the last one was created, when the next one should be created, when up until what date you're going to keep on creating them. And one great thing about um, invoicing using the recurring, if you have a type of client that does a lot of the same invoice every month to its various uh, to its various clients. The amount of work that can be saved is uh, tremendous. Say if you have a uh, service business and every month they send out 150 invoices and each client gets the same basic invoice every month based upon the services for that particular client. They can all go out very easily in an email. The client can then receive the email they can pay either using digital checks or using um, a merchant account with a credit card if, if that is better suited for them, even though the fees are higher. And once that's done, all the journal entries are done. So if you send out 100 bills, say 80% of them answer and pay electronically, no transactions need to be done for those clients. And here's kind of the example. They receive the invoice. They can click to either pay. Once again, no matter where they are, we make it easy for, for the client's customers to pay. They just click on the link and they can pay. And when it's easy to pay, that cuts down on receivables for your clients. There's a few reasons why people don't pay promptly. And one of the main reasons is ease of payment. Sometimes it's just uh, it just slips by. When it's so easy to do, it gets done. I mean, of course, sometimes invoices aren't paid promptly because of financial reasons too, but this will definitely cut down on outstanding invoices. And uh, when the customer opens it up, he sees all the in all the invoices, selects which ones they want to pay, and then. Um, as I mentioned, it's all done. So now let's go into bill invoicing. Screen looks very similar to the sales invoice. And the, the main thing I want to point out here is this is a powerful screen. A lot can be done. You can recover expenses from a customer. It has job cost, it has departments. So now, let's now move on to write-up. Write-up is a traditional mainstay for accountants. Uh, and the way it was traditionally done is the fast heads-down entry, whereas bank feeds, which is bringing in bank transactions automatically, is a much quicker way to do it. But first, I just want to show the features because uh, it won't always be available for all clients to be able to do the uh, to use bank feeds. Some of the features that we have to make traditional write-up easy for for your staff. First of all, in the date field, you can change the date without using the mouse. You can use the keyboard. You can just use the arrow keys to move back and forth through the dates, or you can enter the dates. Or for those who like to use the mouse, you can click on the little calendar and select the date. When you select a client, it'll automatically fill in the default expense account, also the default department if that client has departmental accounting. The reference number will, of course, automatically imp increment. If a client's set up as a 1099 uh, vendor, it'll automatically do that. It'll track all the 1099s during the year, at the end of the year. You can send the 1099s uh, electronically to uh, the IRS, and you can also print them out and give them to the 
to your client to uh, give to his vendors. <clears throat> One more feature we have here is we have these hashtags. In the example I'm showing, it's three transactions. Uh, but and we see it's three transactions, $750. You'll look at the uh, statement or whatever it's being entered, entered from, and you see that it matches up to what you've done. In a real situation, it'll probably be 50 or 100 transactions. And so this way, you have a degree of um, certainty that yes, everything was entered as it should be. And one quick point, I'm going to show just the basic advantages of uh, bank feeds. But the point here is, I know that some bookkeepers are incredibly fast and incredibly accurate. They can enter 100 transactions, and it's it's amazing that how fast it can be done and how accurately accurately it can be done. But no matter how fast, how accurate they are, it's not as fast as just bringing in 100 transactions and them all being there already for you. And if you're like me, sometimes when you're doing write-up work, it's pretty hard to enter 100 transactions and get them all right. And when one's wrong, to track down that error can really be hard. So just the advantages of using bank feeds is number one, they save time. They definitely reduce errors. We have a powerful vendor matching system. So when uh, when the information comes from the bank, we go according to seeing the, the various vendors, who the transactions are for. We do the then the expense account based upon that. Very easy to add a vendor on the fly when you see a new one. And as each time you do a write up again and again, there's less and less unmatched vendors. So the work becomes less and less each time. And the real point and advantage of this, when it's so easy to do the work instead of having to actually enter all the transactions, this makes it easy for you to keep up to date with your clients and to give them real time advice. Uh, traditionally, a lot of write-up work is done uh, just really to do tax returns. So write-up work is done for the clients in uh, March before uh, the tax returns need to be done. And while you can give your clients some good, valuable uh, advice, even though it's pretty much after the fact, it's not the same as being able to see trends in real time and to be a, being able to help your clients that way. So let's move on. I'm going to show quickly various ways after all the transactions are entered, how you as the accountant can uh, review the, uh, the work that's been done. So the first one is directly from the trial balance. You can click on any line in the trial balance. It'll pop up and show all the transactions that make that line. You could then click on one of them and you go directly to the invoice. The trial balance can be uh, customized. So you can come in here and select which, col which columns you want to display. Maybe you want to use tick marks. You want to have a note there. <clears throat> Maybe you don't want to show debits and credits if you want to show a few more columns so they'll fit better. I'm kind of old fashioned. I, I have to see debits and credits. I, I just can't do it if I don't see those two columns. But everyone is different. That's the point here. Uh, you can go to our general ledger screen. And from the general ledger screen, you can pretty much do the exact same thing. Here you can see all the transactions. It was gadgets. You can see exactly what made up those transactions, and you would be able to drill down to them. You can also go into the journals. So you could come in here, sales journal, and see everything that made up the various transactions for sales. And finally, you could go to the view financials. And the view financials, you click on the um, the line, it opens up a little pop-up exactly like the other ones. So the, the point there that I was showing is there's a lot of different methods that you can use depending upon what you feel is best for your practice. So now let me briefly go into financial statements. Right out of the box, when you're using accounting power, you have a very professional looking 
financial statement. It's a complete set. We have balance sheet, income statement, cash flow, statement of retained earnings, tables of contents, accountant's letter, and more. We have dedicated financials that are for nonprofits. The financials can be customized for different purposes. And there's a variety of different uh, statements that we have that are right there, right out of the box, such as a 13 column income statement, a departmental income statement, or four year comparisons. And we have easy to format the returns using the print preferences. This is an, an example of some of the things you could do in the print preferences. There's a lot of other things that you can do, but in the time I have allotted, I'm just going to give a few ideas. The main thing is it's so simple. Come in here, click a few boxes, and you can change it. Maybe you want to have a page break before liabilities, or you want to show the variance on the, uh, on the uh, balance sheet. Maybe you want to show the percent of sales. <clears throat> or you want to put in some special page breaks in the uh, financials. Very easy. Come in, you do it, and then it's there. We also have custom formatting so that you can set up different financials for different situations. Maybe a client wants to see a list of all his sales accounts on his, uh, on his financial statement, which makes it easy for them to look at um, managerial type accounting decisions. Whereas if it's going to a bank or a partner or a shareholder or something, maybe they just want to show total sales. The idea is here, it's very easy to set up different formats, as many as you want, for different circumstances. And you can come in here, you can choose, yeah, I want the account. So in this case, I'm choosing the group that's called sales. I'm saying I want them to be listed. I could have them listed with subtotals. I could have them combined. I could have them combined and print a supplemental schedule. And even if I wanted to, I could even in class, like if I wanted... Um, operating expenses just to be one line on a return and then sales expenses and uh, other expenses i could just have the total there and then have a subtotal or and then also a supplemental it's very easy to set them up and it's very powerful in the different things you can do for them uh, the financial statements you come in here you select exactly what you want to do in this case, I wanted to have the combined. So I would just select combine, the financial would print out. One thing I want to show briefly, well, I don't, it's just to mention, is that we take care of when laws are changed. So when the SARS 28 came out and compilation letters needed to be changed, we changed our default letters for you. And those type of changes don't happen often, but it's a pain in the neck when they do, and we do it for you. So in this case, I want to print out one that's combined. You see sales is combined all into one line. As long as I'd set up the other one, all I would do is go to that custom box and choose list. And then I could print out one that would list out the sales or list out the insurance and also the salaries. Uh, it's just very easy and quick to do for your clients. So now all this work is done final thing we do is we make it very easy to deliver the final product to the client. You can choose to email a report whenever you close a period. You can choose to email a report out to your client whenever you close a year. You can choose to email that set of reports out to your client. You can also choose, which I feel is the much more secure and better method, you can choose to uh, deliver the product to your clients by giving them access to the cloud cabinet. And then when a period is closed, it can be auto archived. And when a year is closed, it can be auto archived. You can set up exactly what you want to be in the various report sets. This is for the closed period. There's also one for closed year and a custom set too. One of the things that uh, you would want to include with the report set is the performance analysis report. This is just the first page of it, but it gives uh, income statement comparisons. It gives a summary, cash balances, projected cash balances. It also will um, 
give reports on uh, outstanding client rec customer receivables, uh, outstanding payables. It'll give some ratios. If you're doing any budgeting for your client, which I'm not going into budgeting here, but we have a, a budget where you can compare budget against actual and things like that. <coughs> but you can have that included with the performance analysis report. So that's pretty much it. But the question would be, how can you start offering cash to your clients? First of all, as I mentioned, you don't really need more resources to offer CAS. You don't need the resources of larger firms, and it doesn't really take a big change in how you run things. You don't have to suddenly start offering CAS to all your clients at one time. I, I think, although different firms like different methods, but I think the best way is to start with one or two clients to get into the, the mode. You see exactly what's what's required, what strengths are there, what, if anything is needed to change little things in your um, processes, what you need to do. But more importantly, we have a guide, which is Create Your Cast Practice. And this is a, a guide, it's maybe 15 pages, not too long, but it's also comprehensive enough that it really gives you valuable information. And so you, if this is under resources, supporting documents, you click on it, you can print it out as a PDF and you can read it. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the uh, time you gave me. Uh, my name is David Manell. My email is d-m-u-n-n-e-l-l -L at accountantsworld.com. If you have any comments, any questions, feel free to uh, to email me and I will get back to you. Thank you.